Printing on textiles is a more complicated uh, operation, clearly, than printing on a smooth substrate because the textile absorbs quite uh, a large quantity of the ink that you place on it. Uh, and so your system has to deposit more ink or you have to work with a, a multiple pass system uh, of ink head, inkjet heads in order to put down enough ink to, uh, to get the color depth that most applications require. Having said that, um, we've seen such rapid development in the printhead technology that there are now a wide variety of commercial applications and an almost astonishing variety of products being pr produced by digital printing in the textile field. The industry breaks down into a number of areas. Now, to be honest with you, the part that I come from is the mainstream textile printing market for applications such as fashion and, uh, and interior fabrics and so on, uh, cushions and upholstery, um, which mainly go through a retail uh, distribution chain. And those have to meet particular requirements, such as if you're printing fashion, it has to be capable of being washed 30 times without any appreciable loss of color. And that means that the dye stuff technology, the ink technology that's used, is entirely different from the majority of applications in signage. So that even though people are printing with similar machines, um, they are operating in a, uh, entirely different markets, often with no crossover in between the two different areas. We're seeing quite rapid growth, and especially in FESPA's traditional market um, of uh, soft signage and, and garments, where in garments there's a major changeover happening from screen to direct digital. And uh, we've seen some quite startling predictions. At the conference before the, uh, before the exhibition opened, we had a presentation from Patty Williams at IT Strategies who was predicting 69% compound growth year on year in textile applications between 2005 and 2010 and a total retail value in textiles of something like $18 billion. I mean this is major stuff if it happens, if it happens. So huge variety. What have we seen today? We've seen fashion, dresses, you name it. These days someone out there has got a commercial application making money on digitally printing textiles. It's, uh, it's a boom time at the moment. There's a great deal more flexibility taking place. We've got white inks now, so uh, until quite recently you really could only print uh, with digitally on either a white or a very light coloured garment. Now uh, there are people out there with white inks, you place a white background down and, and you can print any colour on top of it. There are many applications uh, for different markets. There's no printer out there who could do work in all these markets. You'd think the technology was very similar, um, but in reality in each of these niche areas you need some specialist knowledge and especially you need detailed knowledge of the ink technologies uh, in order to be successful. And that's especially true in fashion where even a single garment might include polyester, it might include viscose, uh, there could be bits of nylon on it. Uh, the, uh, the retailer or the brand, who is ever, or, whoever is ordering that garment, will expect you to be able to match the colours precisely on each of these different substrates. And, by the way, it must be colour fast, it must rub off, it mustn't transfer to the white parts of the garment by rubbing. You'd be able to, you need to be able to wash it uh, and, uh, and not notice any significant colour change in it. So that's a very specialist area, not FESPA's traditional market. But we thought it was quite important at the conference this, uh, this week to show people these applications, to get an appreciation of the whole spectrum of digital textile. The textile market in particular, especially when you talk about volume production, has been hampered by the limitations on the print heads that have been around. Um, and we are seeing that problem being overcome in quite a significant way, so that the technology is not only getting faster, but it's also capable of putting down more ink um, to get a, a, a better depth of color on the, uh, on the substrate. Now, that has a number of implications. It means that whereas digital was only cost effective for very, very short runs in the past, the level at which it is competing with uh, screen printing gets higher and higher and higher in terms of the volume all the time. 
And one of the most interesting machines around, of which uh, the first production version has been built, is the um, ISIS machine from Osiris in the Netherlands. Um, this is a machine which is about eight feet high and about 20 feet long. And uh, it prints something like uh, 2,000 meters an hour. It's very, very fast. And uh, the inks on this, notably, are very cheap. And here you're talking about a machine which can genuinely compete with even some of the volume screen printing, screen printing applications for key, up, key areas of the industry, like upholstery, like automotive, where digital is already being used quite widely, and across a range of substrates, because, of course, you, you, know, you need to, a machine that's not just capable of doing one ink, but can do several inks and not take forever to change over between one set and another. So there were faster and faster applications and cheaper and cheaper production mean that it's definitely a technology with a future.